Hey everyone, I'm Jay. I'm Sophia. And I'm Scott, and welcome to Witches Betwixt. <laughs> it's laugh. been a day. Well, Sophia's had a day. Sophia's had a very busy day. I've had a... I'm... Eh, chill. I'm always kinda. having a fucking day, <laughs> friend. Whether it's a good day, a bad day, it's a fucking day. Okay? <laughs> Your entire life is a fucking day. <laughs> This has been a fucking day, man. <laughs> what a fucking year this day has been. <laughs> oh, fuck. Ain't that the damn truth. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, today, today we're, we, we kind of, actually, we kind of just thought of this topic a couple minutes before we hit the record button, really. Um, mm -hmm. so, this is kind of a loose uh, I guess a loose summer summarization of what we're gonna want to talk about today. We really want to talk about this concept of home. You know, what is a home? What makes a home? Kind of thing. And also really expand that into well, the spaces within that home. You know, like what makes, uh, you know, particularly spaces magical or conducive to magic working and things like that. And I really thought about this because I, me personally, I've been doing a lot of work in my house um i don't own the house or anything but there's just a lot there's been a lot of junk in the basement in particular and i really wanted to use that space as a as a workshop space to make products for the shop and so i've been um working really hard to clear out that space and make it look nice and make it usable and so that got me thinking i was like yeah i've kind of been doing that in other rooms in my house you know like i've just been thinking about space differently because i'm home so much because you know lockdown and social distancing restrictions so that's kind of where we're going today with today's episode um so uh scott you had mentioned earlier that you were actually kind of thinking along the same lines too because you were thinking about your own kind of space yeah uh not necessarily any um how do i put this uh you know so I, I, my altars are all in my room. Um, my ancestral altar and I guess my, my working altar. Um, so I guess maybe explain your living situation for anyone who might be newer to the podcast. So like, who do you live with? So you live in right. basically like a house with other people. You have roommates right. essentially. I live all together. It's five people. That's including myself. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, uh, so it's me, my partner, Darian. Christian, my mom, and my father. And the thing is, is that my house, you know, it never really gets to stay clean very long. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, whether that's, you know, some of us are lazy, some of us work a lot, some of us have depression. You know, it's it's kind of, you know, it gets messy, we clean, and then it gets messy, and then it, you know. Clutter, um, just everyday clutter. I feel that. Too. Yeah, I feel like I'm yeah. always clearing off a table constantly, or moving this over here. Or... Right, right, and also too, like my house is not that big. Um, yeah, your ha we're, our houses are about the same size. Right, it's a my house is a standard row home, you know, in Philadelphia. Um, you know, it's it's a three bedroom, one bathroom, you know, two floor house. You know what I mean? Um. I actually kind of feel like your your house might be a little bit bigger, but that just might I don't know. But it might be slightly bigger. I do have that little sunroom area in the front. Right. So it right. might be slightly bigger. But basically, so, um, I mean it's just it's a box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Like it's not, you know, and also too, my house is incredibly old. Uh, yeah. my grandparents lived here uh when my Aunt Sandy was born and my Aunt Sandy is almost sixty. Right. Or is sixty. So you know, this house is, is, is up there. Um, so with the age of the house and the, the, the people occupying it, you know, it becomes hard to find a space. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly don't like having my altars in my room. Um, I find that because I so quickly, like if I like depending on my, my state that I'm in emotionally, uh, my room becomes messy, you know, and now that I have my uh, Darian with me, mm. who admittedly is very messy, mm. like, <laughs> I can keep a space cleaner longer than he can. He kind of just explodes. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I have a friend like that. He comes he comes over to my house every week and just explodes with stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it's, I would prefer to have my altars in like an altar room or honestly outside. I would love mm. to like make... Um, to have like a permanent outside altar. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, like like I I I I one time saw this person. They got old drawers from like a broken uh, dresser drawer set that someone had set out in the trash, mm. and it was all solid wood. And what they did was they just, you know, sanded it and finished it and kind of made the drawers like little shrines. Mm. And That's then they cool finished idea. it, you know, with like a, a you know the the wood finish so the rain can fall on it, it won't get damaged or whatever. Mm. And uh, they put like doors on it and stuff. I saw that and I thought that was like a really cool project just because I find that like. I like being outside when I do ritual or, mm -hmm. you know, magic. Um, I could do simple stuff, you know, but I find that the two places, like I said, that I do magic, like the best are the kitchen mm. and outside, <laughs> um, which I think is pretty telling. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and considering your kitchen is right next to the yard. <laughs> right. Like... <laughs> which is like my garden. Right. Yeah. Which, you know, so yeah so for me like i really do wish that i could find a have a space or a house that where i could kind of move my magical practice out of mm. not to mention too um i find that sleep and magical practice in one room are not always uh they don't always you know mix, mix. well yeah um because you know there are energies that i work with that i really don't want to be sleeping in you mm, know what i you mean? don't want them buzzing around while you're sleeping right right um not to mention too that they're like like with some of the things that i have coming up for the spring um there are really some potent uh i don't know how to put this um so one of the books that i'm reading discusses a magical technique called profane scrying okay in which uh you do not do literally there, there's no preparation there's no candles there's no cleansing there's no nothing you don't cast a compass you don't cast a circle you don't call a quarter you don't do nothing you okay take so you yourself, just jump into the thing yeah you, you slam dunk a up. can of spaghettios in the fucking parking lot of a 7-eleven <laughs> and conjure some old ones and you sit there in front <laughs> of a mirror okay uh, a regular mirror and there's a process now interesting i don't want to get into that because that's not what we're talking about but right. um uh, by the way if you're interested in, in where that uh, where that comes from it's uh robin artisan's new book called the cloven stone workings for the audience if you're curious um but oh, anyway. it's like i'm a witch or something and i knew you were gonna drop a book name and i had already grabbed my little notebook and i was starting to write and i was like oh the cloven stone i'm sorry what was that name again no i really did miss it what was it <laughs> Uh, the cloven stone workings the cloven stone workings by robin artisan robin artisan okay mm -hmm. i'm a witch <laughs> and <laughs> um stereotype. You, now, uh what should i call it um energies like that if you read through the book and once then i'm man i'm trying not to say too much about it because you know talking about your magic and stuff but um let's just say i've unintentionally got far into that many many years ago mm -hmm. without ever realizing it what i was doing mm. and it scared the shit out of me really? um you kind of well yeah i'll i'll if, if you don't mind jay i'll talk to you more about that off, off sure the, yeah that's fine but um anyway what i'm trying to say is that kind of energy that kind of potency isn't because it's so wild it's not like you know it's not something like once again it's just not something i want to be in so you said it was uh, uh the profane what? Uh it's called profane scrying. Profane scrying. Okay, okay. Cuz in generally speaking scrying is is a ritual, right? Like it's actually it has a setup. You set a white candle at a certain distance and you know there there's maybe a certain sacred incense that you're burning or you mm -hmm. know there's a series of things with with profane incense you literally do nothing. Mm. You don't take a shower, you don't do you literally just sit there mm. and scry, which is a completely different experience um yeah so uh so anyway with given with stuff like that there's just like i said energies that i don't want to stay in while i sleep and um 
I just find, you know, like sometimes when I'm doing ancestral work, uh, you know, the ancestors could be a little bit loud, you mm-hmm. know, at night time or the spirits of the dead in general. But of course, the problem right now in my life, like currently, <laughs> is mm-hmm. uh, a really messy room, you know, and then I have uh, an un- oh, I have an unexpected uh, bunny again. I know I mentioned on the podcast that uh, yes, the, the bun. The bun that right. has appeared in your life. <laughs> yeah, uh, once again, um, Piwacket passed away about the beginning of 2020, um, or the end of 2019. So, uh, so we also have a bunny in the room, uh, because Darian. Oh right, the is bunny's in your bedroom. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, Darian doesn't feel comfortable leaving uh, Lola downstairs because uh, my father smokes a lot, and we had a cat recently passed uh due to leukemia mm. which was interesting but we won't go there mm. so with with the bunny and the the kind of messes that she makes and everything else you know and having to constantly clean up after her she flings her food and it's a wreck so my mm. room is like literally a train wreck um and you know like you know so I don't know. Like I guess my thing is, like I said, I would like a space outside of my room where I could do magic, preferably outside. Right. Um, but also too, once again, to kind of I guess talk about home, right? Mm-hmm. I also think that magical space and home space, you know, uh, for a lot of people, home is home is incredibly subjective for a lot of people. Mm. Home is a feeling. Home is, you know, the 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 connections that you have with the people that you live with, you know, or the or the creatures, you know, you may have furry friends mm-hmm. and family. Um, it's also really hard when you live in situations where you're not compatible emotionally or mentally with one or more parties in your space. Correct. Um, yeah. I mean, that's that's always a struggle. I mean, whether that's just blood family you just kind of happen to live right. with, or mm-hmm. that's, you know, shitty roommates, you know, it, right. could, it could go exactly. either way. Exactly. And, you know, it's also too, it comes down to one of the, one of the biggest things that I find as a practitioner of magic as well, is that for me, um, when you have people around you that uh, especially like they know about your magical practice, but they think it's maybe they don't believe that you can, you mm-hmm. know, work, yeah. you know, work, work your will, right? It's like mm-hmm. particularly you, right? Like there are other people who can, but you particularly can't. Right? Yeah, you, you just don't have that, right? You, you, you for that yeah. is active disbelief. Huh. Hmm. So like they believe it, but like. They Not in terms of you. They just believe your ability to do something. As a side tangent, because I've been a little bit quiet here, mm-hmm. um, somebody I know used to do this to me in a car. I was really good at snapping my fingers to make a, uh, a light turn yellow. Not to turn green, per se, because that was really hard, or get it to turn red, but you could always get it to turn yellow because it was the transitory color, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I had this down to a fucking T, and then he was riding in my car one day and I told him that I was going to, he, he like asked what I was doing and I told him it. And then immediately after that, and it had worked the first time it stopped working. And I was like, are you interfering with, with me? And he just gave me a big fucking grin. And I was like, you son of a bitch. Right. And then like somebody's active disbelief of being like this fucker. No, fuck mm-hmm. this fucker. They can't do nothing. That's right. active disbelief. That is like a form of interference. Mm-hmm. Huh, it's like static. Yeah, yep. uh, it's it's more than static. It's mm-hmm. like it's like you trying oh. to play tennis and somebody's <laughs> sitting there with a leaf blower trying to blow <laughs> it away. It, that's that, what it is. And that's exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, I love that. That was perfect. Pl- trying to play tennis. And the other person has a leaf blower. That is perfect. Someone's got a leaf blower and trying to knock your ball off. And yeah. that's that's literally what it's like. Um, so that's I mean that's a lot of the big reason why. Uh, for the audience, you'll hear in I guess this will come out after the last video we did. You'll hear in the last video that, um, I say that I haven't been doing much and I've been planning more for the spring. Um, and a lot of that is also because of that because at that point, 
my father will be out of the house and I won't have that leaf blower anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, and I could finally kind of. You can open up your space a little. You right. Kind of move, kind of you can move the bunny out of there. Because <laughs> I've had to kind of lock up, you know, I had to, to close up shop, you know. I really had to, to shut myself down because, you know, I spend so much of my time in my own in my own space uh, trying to, you know, affirm, right? Like protect myself from narcissistic and psychic vampirism, which I realize though related, not the same thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> just to reiterate. Um, and yeah, but those, the, these, these are the things that are important though, you know, trying to li have a home and sacred space or ritual space or magic space, whatever, um, that the, these are the things that you need is, is like calmness and serenity and a place where your, uh, your work, your relationships, your physical working relationships are at least, you know, actually working, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I think this, you know, this is really one of those things where the mysticism part of magic plays a really big role, right? It, it is it, in the in that. How do I put this? Our our you know the way that our physical reality affects our our spiritual ability to work magic. Mm. You know what I mean? Our, it affects our state of mind. It affects our psyche, and therefore affects our kind of focus on or our ability to to transition between mundane consciousness and, and magical consciousness you know yeah so yeah so i guess that's 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 the extent of how i've been contemplating this you know thinking about what is home you know what is you know wh where what is the future of my magical practice which as i said in the last uh the last video which everyone will see uh eventually um, I kind of have, you know, figured out, like, it's not really a problem, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only problem is just getting there. <laughs> right. So, yeah. What about you, Sophia? How is what your... What about uh... me? What about you? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. My house has, um, one of the other people here actively has their own tra tradition that they practice. And I'm oh. not going to go into great detail about it, but um, they uh, they set up a house altar that basically it's only the two of us who maintain it. They so, is, do, or like, do they practice of... witchcraft? I guess, or some, or just some <laughs> um, magical practice, spiritual magical practice in general. I'm trying not to put a label on it because I don't mm. think she gave me specific terms okay. on what her practitioner stuff were like her family comes from uh jamaica i believe it was and they had a farm out there and i think she mentioned influences of hoodoo but okay. don't quote me on that okay just curious yeah yeah and uh we got a nice little house halter but i am the person who um is the most vocal about magic like if you poke uh my roommate they'll happily like tell you what they know and we'll happily have a chat about it and stuff but i'm like you know, obviously in a podcast and in mm -hmm. an order, and I'm like, "Ooh, look at me! Magic's my whole life." Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, someone asks I've... you a question, and you're like, "Do you have three hours? <laughs> do, you, do you want? Well, not quite three hours, but it's more like, do you want a speech and reference notes after?" <laughs> like... Would you like a PowerPoint presentation or the Spark well, like... Notes version? <laughs> living in a communal house can be a bit of a mixed bag because it all depends on who you got right right but i wanted to talk about the concept of like home and magic because like i've been so fucking incredibly homesick lately and to me homesick isn't like thinking of a house it's like land you know mm. like I, I've made it no secret that I'm out here in Toronto. Well, I'm kind of like, kind of thinking about, not kind of thinking about, I kind of made the decision today that I want to move back to my home province by the end of the year if I can, right? Okay. Because like, I keep having this deep, deep inner longing of like, wanting to go meditate on the mountains outside the village that I grew up in. So I'm curious, like, um, when you say you move back... So you mean just back to the province, not necessarily the hometown where you grew up in? I ain't never gonna live in that hometown. Okay, okay. I was gonna say, I mean, that was kind of, it doesn't seem like there's much prospects there for you. 
No, I'd be going to Vancouver, right? Right. Okay, so a city. That's the thing. I can work in film in Vancouver mm. real fucking well, right? Can you work for the same company? Like, do they have... I can work for the same union. Not the same uh, company, but okay. the same union. But now that you're yeah. in the union, you can, you know, seek other places we'll that are hiring? See. I'm, 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 I'm putting... I'm putting gear, uh, gears into motion, okay. and whether it happens this year, it's probably or easier in a to of years. search when you already have the channel open, though. So it's going to well, make your I searching mean, it's easier. Like, it's like this: I have friends who work in film in BC, in Vancouver specifically. Mm -hmm. I have a job that gets me into a union mm -hmm. that hires out there as well for the same type of work. You know how that goes. Yeah, you just got to wait for the uh, opportunity to open. And the money to save up to to get out there pretty mm -hmm. much and it's not even a matter of the opportunity to open it's more like the time to get the resources lined up to go do it mm -hmm. and i i want to work in film still i'm very glad that i did that but like i've been missing like my friends and my family and like i don't have a ton of close friends out here i can hang out with like my friends out here are nice and I definitely will miss a lot of them. And it's not like I'm never coming back to Toronto, but like I have a family. I have like nephews. I have three nephews right now. I uh, that are watching that I'm watching grow up without being there to help teach them nothing. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just like to, to, to Henrik, he, I was his auntie and I was like so important for a long time and now I'm just not there, right? And he misses right. his auntie a lot, right? What and... was your um initial goal when you moved out to Toronto? Were you just like, man, fuck a this side of, of the country? Or... A lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. I was getting away from like a bad friendship breakup and like oh. trauma and dealing with a lot of shit that had fallen out. Like my entire social circle in Vancouver had kind of imploded, like... You found it was like uh, kind of like the rug was pulled out from under you a little bit. Not really. It was mm. just like, like it's like the universe pushes me to go to places so I can learn specific things, and then it pushes me in specific ways so that I can leave that place when when it's when it's my time. Mm. I very much know that it's my job to. I'm not gonna say a t I have a title or anything that I do specifically, but it is my job to travel around and meet people in different places who might be in need of help or knowledge and help them in any way that I possibly can, even if it's sitting and learning from them and saying, oh, wow, that lines up with this. And then sharing what I, I learned, uh, how, how it lines up. And then that teaches them in turn, you know, hmm. even if it's something as simple as that, that's kind of my job in, in life. And I go around like sharing knowledge of people and helping out and doing things. I'm not going to put, uh, too much definition on it because that yeah. spoils the magic of it, right? Stuff and things. But I, I, I do good shit to help people, and I try and live in a good way. That's what I try to do. Hmm. And it's um increasingly hard to do it out here. I can't, like, go out into the woods. There are no woods out here. There's right. parks. And if I go to the park and I try to, say, gather some cedar boughs from a tree and, like, leave an offering under it, that'll get me a fine yeah leaving an offering no <laughs> that's uh, littering but like Cons well, no. yeah, according they, to them they, there's no way in nine hells they're going to be able to get mad at me for leaving a tobacco offering under a tree oh, that true. will not yeah, yeah. fly in court it's an yeah. organic material that's it's inobtrusive it's like a, a native tradition they would fucking impale themselves on a pike if they tried to to do that the collecting of the vows, however, yeah. is very much something they can ticket me for. And it's absurd. It's like, I can't explain how, how fucking oppressive it feels to not be able to just go walk into the woods and have some relations with trees that I know. See, and I have some other person in there being like, hey, you can't come in here and take that little bit of that tree. Like, who the fuck are you to tell me that I can't be doing this? You know? Like, fuck off out of here. Back in BC, you can just go cut trees down if you so really need for firewood. No one's going to look twice at you as long as it's not on somebody's personal property, right? Right. And, you know, it's so funny that you mentioned that because um, my 30th birthday is coming up in April. And I'm like, I really want to go camping. So, like, I want to rent a cabin and go camping for the weekend and just fucking chill in 
-hmm. nature and Ooh. just chill mm -hmm. <laughs> you know do some witchy shit and chill um and I, I've been thinking about what, what you were saying, Sophia, about the restrictions. Because I'm like, yeah, you know, you can go to a park in the city and practice. But I'm like, no, but I hate when people f people fucking stare at you. And then, they're, you know what I mean? It's like that whole, it, and it's so restrictive. Well, oh, can we have fire? Oh, I don't know. Let me check the fire rules. Okay, okay, we can't have fire. Okay, so can we get, you know what I mean? And it's just like, why? And I, I understand why all those policies exist in an urban setting. I completely understand why they exist but i don't want to play by those rules i kind of just i want to, that's why like when i go out into nature when i do go camping when i do finally get to get to go away from the city because i also grew up in the city it like it just fills me with such um it kind of blows my mind every time right like when i when i experience that final that that severed connection between me and the city when i feel that that's finally gone I feel so free, almost giddy, like a like a kid, like when you yeah. like your, your parents give you like ten bucks, you go and they get whatever candy you want, and you're like, what, you know, and you just go crazy, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how I feel, um, just because of, it's, it's so restrictive in the city. It's nice to have a park, don't get me wrong, it it's better than nothing, but right, damn, it's still hard to just, deal with. It feels like being home to be out in the west for me toronto doesn't feel like home it's it's a great city it's endlessly big there's more cool people here than i could ever possibly hope to meet in my whole fucking life but you know what i'm not gonna get to talk to all of them most of them don't even want to talk to me right now you know especially not with covid restrictions right and like where can I go to climb a mountain out here? There are none. Right. And where can I go to swim in a river or a lake? Well, Lake Ontario is cold and fucking polluted. And I can't swim in it. And it's like the size of a fucking ocean, man. Like, mm -hmm. and, and if I try and get outside of the city here, and it's not one of the few green spaces that are centered around a river where there actually are trees here. It's just prairie. Mm. It's just fucking empty. I went to like uh, York, which is like the north part of Toronto, when I was going to like a value village out there. Yeah. And it was like it was like I was back in Saskatchewan. Wow. And it was it was flatter than fucking where I where parts of the Saskatchewan where I had uh, a little bit of my childhood spent, you know. Hmm. Northern Saskatchewan has more fucking hills than southern Ontario. I'll tell you that much. Hmm. Yeah. So it's like dead ass prairie out here and just big fucking lake, you know. So it's it's windy, it's cold, it's 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 temperamental. It's just it's a bunch of city and, and the land is beautiful when there's like trees and ravines and all this stuff. And I've seen other parts where like when you go up to this one, um, I posted photos of it on our Instagram page where the waterfall was that huge cliff. That area is wonderful, but that's like a 45 minute drive away from Toronto. Right. Mm. And you got to pack in the car and drive like 30 minutes before you're even no longer seeing the city, right? And and even then, you're still just going to be going towards other cities. Right, right? other like little there's... suburbs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there'll be big gaps in between, big enough to have forests and stuff. But it's like, nature out here is wildly different. Like, I hear people out here being like, I saw a deer! And I'm yeah. like, <laughs> and I stop and I, and I want to be like, oh... And when I was younger, I was like, oh, what? You only just see deers? Oh, back home, they're there all the time. <laughs> but, like, now that I'm older, it's like, when was the last time I saw a deer? You know? Especially when you're so <laughs> used to encountering that. Now you're like, wow, this is a rare Constantly. occurrence. I haven't seen a deer since I've been out here. I've seen lots of raccoons, squirrels. I've seen rabbits, even a, a fucking possum or two. Uh, there's cicadas. Uh, which, strangely enough, there's not cicadas back home in BC. I feel like that's one of the things I'll miss most is the possums and cicadas because they're sweethearts. Mm -hmm. um, except the cicadas are actually kind of fucking annoying. 
Yeah, they, they're probably the planet's most annoying bug. <laughs> if you if you grew up with them, they're very calming. It's like um, people who grew up next to train tracks often find the sounds of trains really sleep inducing. Yeah, like we have a them. we we get cicadas here too. Like in the like you know like toward that end of summer kind of thing. Um, I like I don't mind the sound of them. That to me, that's just a sound of summer. You know. Yeah. But I don't and like encountering them because they will fly right at your face and they're just yeah. big and gross looking. I'm like, ugh. They're meaty little fuckers and they yeah. pop if you step on them. Ugh, nasty. Yeah. They can stay in the trees and make their little noise and leave me alone. Yeah. I won't. I won't. Uh, <laughs> Apologies to all the headphone users. <laughs> yeah. But like, it's very different back home. And there's my mountains and my rivers. I can swim in my rivers back home. I can swim in the lakes. I can drink a well or like dig a well in the ground and filter the water from it and have clean drinking water on my property, right? Like, I I can just like go out and get herbs. I can find sweet grass. I could find cedar, you know, I could go on a walk under the woods all day and not see someone. I could bring a dog with me. Uh probably have to bring a person with me so I don't get into an encounter with an animal because uh dealing with wildlife is a very fucking different thing out there. Mm. So you would still move to like an urban area, I guess, for living and working and stuff like that. Yeah, because like I want to work in film, mm -hmm. right? So I'd be where I'd be living in Vancouver, and Vancouver is still a fucking city. And but how Vancouver... how far do you have to go outside of Vancouver to to get to that you know nature wildlife? Like how far do you have say, to go? Vancouver is like as far as cities go, one of the greenest cities I've I've been in. Really? Like you could be standing in in the city. And, like, the whole street is lined with trees that are so big and so old, their canopies reach over the top. Mm. And you feel like you're in a forest street. So they've, and, and they have a lot of, like, green policies, too. So they kind of, like, um, oh, embraced, yeah. they kind of incorporated nature into the city as opposed to just ripping it out Hugely. and replacing it. Hugely. Whereas Vancouver, uh, sorry, whereas Toronto out here, it's, like, gray concrete it's not even like they had to rip out a lot like if you think about it you don't have to rip out stuff when you're building over prairie you rip out the grass right? oh yeah yeah so really it's but just it's it was just flat prairie land and they just built a flat kind of city on top of it well, i wouldn't i wouldn't reduce it all to just extremes like uh, to just binary like that like mm -hmm. i'm sure they did cut some trees down and destroy some oh, very yeah, yeah. beautiful places oh of right? course mm-hmm that's that's like obviously without exception but at the mm -hmm. same time they can expand a lot easily because there's lots of spaces where it is open field right and to colonizers that's just open real estate that's just clean development right fucking those the grass have the dirt and build your skyscraper right so i'm just ranting about land and stuff anyways <laughs> to me like magic and home it's about like where I am like I have my altar in my room and mm. I do my own practices in here because I've had to by necessity always do magic in my room I've never gotten really th that used to doing uh ceremonies in the rest of the house it's gotten a little different in adult life um especially like living with other people who are into magic and now that I've able to been been able to like cultivate my own spaces i can do the occasional ritual out back or maybe go sing out back in the morning to the sun when it's rising stuff like that you know and um i just i can't do that here and i'm homesick and like does that surprise you that you're homesick no and mm. yeah a little bit like years not a, well i i don't it doesn't surprise me because I don't have expectations. Mm, okay. Like, I didn't expect to just all of a sudden want to move back home at this point. Mm -hmm. But it makes a fuck ton of sense. And the moment I kind of started making plans to do it and dedicated myself to it as like a good backup plan for if uh, stuff in, in Toronto doesn't work out. And I've been actually getting nudged by the spirits for a long time to move out of Toronto. Hmm. Yeah. 
You've ex I mean, you've expressed your uh, displeasure with the city a couple times. Like, there are moments where you're like, wow, the city is pretty cool. And then there's some other moments where you're like, eh. I think it, what it was for you, you were just saying, like, connections with people have been, like, the hardest thing. Just like Well, like, I there's so many people here. I could actually be out. I could be hooking up with people every night of the week, pretty much, right now, if it wasn't COVID. Mm -hmm. But it's COVID. And by the time I managed to get out of my shell after finding myself here, everybody else got crammed back into theirs. So I'm over here, fucking opened up, ready to go, happy being me, uh, not even really uh, afraid of COVID. I'm cautious, but I'm not afraid of it, right? Like, I, I take precautions. I wear my mask and sanitize and shit. Mm. But, like... The moment I'm finally good to go, the rest of the world's like, I'm not ready now. Like, Fuck, man. <laughs> it's like, cut a bitch some slack, man. You're like, what did I do to you? <laughs> you think this is easy, man? Fuck. I'm so in a way, here, like... I'm doing my best, and you're just over there going, okay, now I'm not ready. <laughs> and you're like, wow, <laughs> way to be like that. <laughs> God damn. Um, hmm. What were you going to say? No, I was, I was, I was thinking. Um, I guess that it makes sense, like especially with COVID and and being in a more, I guess Toronto is is more is Toronto more populated by like magnitude of three or more than Vancouver. Okay, so it's more populated. Fuck so you know, yeah, yeah, more people crammed in, you know, a, you know, a space and mm -hmm. and with COVID, that's just like, oh God, it's just like. Everyone just starts looking at every, and I I live in Philly. I see it now, and I don't even I don't even live in like a super concentrated section of the city. But you know, I I work in a super concentrated section of the city, and everyone just looks at each other like we're all like we're all lepers. <laughs> I don't know, like we're all just gross, and like people don't look. Not that in Philly people particularly looked at you nicely anyway <laughs> pre-covid <laughs> but there's an extra layer now <laughs> yeah. is, like, a lot of people who grew up in the cities may not realize it but they change you in a very real way one minute you like you're moving in and thinking it's cool and you're glitz and glam and you think it's all right and the next minute you're like getting obsessed with your image, being paranoid about how people see you, trying to live up to these grandiose expectations of what the world wants to you, trying to take on more than you should, putting yourself in dangerous situations. There's like a very real underside to the city that is just a naturally agreed upon part of the arrangement that you don't even realize when you're living in it. Mm. Like, for example, every big if every big city by necessity has homelessness. Mm -hmm. e even small towns have some homelessness, but it's generally a lot easier to manage in a home small town because mm -hmm. like work is plentiful usually, or the town dies up, uh, uh, or you can camp pretty easy and get access to to land and stuff and make your own semi-permanent structures like underground right. dwellings like people do that a lot actually right also too they're less likely to fill up like on like their uh their homelessness like you know locations where mm -hmm. homeless people could stay they're less likely to fill up so they don't have the same like you know you can only stay here 48 hours you know and then you have to leave mm -hmm. and then you know they don't have that they can, they can they can like recover or either stay there long enough until they want to move on to a new town you know there's mm -hmm. options mm -hmm. small towns are really not that bad they're not like super great i'm not going to romanticize no, them not. and treat them like they're bastions of humanity mm -hmm. sometimes they're like horrible little recluses of Absolutely. echo chamber think uh microcosmic like little... yeah and like racist and bigoted as yep. fuck sometimes which is a lot to do with not all of them mm-hmm Mm -hmm. and, and like I think it's all about a middle for me right it's like I I know I would need Vancouver for the for the money and what I need to do in the world through the film industry um, but at the same time I like Vancouver because it's like I could go to a park by transit in Vancouver 
that is like a rainforest. Mm -hmm. Or I can transit up to a fucking gondola that'll take me up a mountain. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like It's accessible. Nature is accessible. Yeah. So you, you still have the city, but nature is uh -huh. still there. Like, you can just get to it. You just gotta hop on mm -hmm. whatever. Train, bus, trolley, doesn't matter. Just and the hop cool on, thing about you're there. Vancouver is there's, like, little hidden sections of greenery in the city, like, along the path where the uh, sky train goes. Mm -hmm. There's, like, spots where there's, like, it's nobody's property, and there's actually just, like, little trails there you can walk along, and there's, like, trees and shit to check out, and it, there's tons of shit like that all over the city. You just gotta check it out, right? It's actually funny. I'm, I'm thinking about uh, some other nature-y restrictions. So you can go the Delaware River. You go to bank. You can go tubing on the Delaware River, and it's like up in the, up in like New Hope, like a suburb, where you can go tubing on this river. But they tell you when they're loading you up, the, there's instructions for how you're supposed to tube down the river. They're like, well, when you reach us, you like, you know, try and stay. I think it's try and stay to the right because that's the Pennsylvania side. <laughs> try not to go to the left because that's the new jersey side and that's actually some people's personal properties that you're like kind of floating up next to and it's just like <laughs> you're know, like it really breaks the magic away from the idea of just like yeah, floating just... down a river or did i did i flip it no just saying so, uh, you know darian's sitting here shaking his head as you're talking he's going yep yeah yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh he's awake Good morning, Darian. Yeah, he woke up. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like it just takes away from it a little bit, and you're like, oh, okay. And then they're like, oh, and then there's a hot dog stand you can stop at, and you're like, oh god, you gotta like make like I don't want to take money down the river, like <laughs> what the fuck? Um, yeah, it just kind of takes away from the, from the magic of it. So yeah, I if if I could live in a place, I mean, I don't, I think we kind of do live semi close to some nice parks that we could really transit to like fdr is so nice that park is massive but you can still hear the cars you know I, we don't really have any spots that you can kind of like forget you're in the city none that i can think of off the top of my head what do you think scott am i missing uh, anything or i i think there, there is some um, uh babe what's that place you always want to take me to Ty taikomi Something national, something. Taconi national. What's what is the place that you said you went to with school? Hmm? You went to some like national park or something close to PA or whatever. Hmm. They have like or whatever it was. It was some big <laughs> wilderness something <laughs> with the hawk, and you were walking oh. your dog there, and you you had to be careful because oh, they would scoop up. Tinicum. Uh... Tinicum. 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 Yeah, it's a wildlife reserve. It's a wildlife reserve. Uh, Where's that? It's in like uh, it's in southwest. It's like, southwest somewhere. There's a lot of places like that in southwest. I was gonna say Cobb's Creek is another place. It's yeah, Cobb's public, Creek. But uh, plenty of times I've been there and I forget I'm in the city. Yeah. Yeah. And to kind of like turn this episode onto another angle, mm -hmm. um, another thing about home is like difficulty home especially as queer people ain't always a fun fucking topic is it oh, no and really I'm, isn't. I'm i'm over here talking wistfully about going back home but even right now in the back of my mind it's like fuck you you gotta remember girl like you're gonna be close to your dad again right and there mm. is certain things that that'll mean and the community will be smaller it's it's about three times smaller than Vancouver, and if you, if or sorry than Toronto, and if I thought it was hard, uh, dating people here, I mean it isn't actually, um, but like I felt before, like Vancouver was too small, like it was easy to run into the same people all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And it's easy to wonder, like, what if I move back and the people that are right for me are out here, you know, and like. I feel constantly torn as a queer person, and this is what sucks. Home is a place that I have trauma around. I want to mm -hmm. be able to go back to Grand Forks and, and experience the land and the nature because that's what I love about it, but I don't want to... 
I don't want to talk to some of the people that I grew up with. Any of the people that I grew up with that I care about, I'm still talking to to this day. Mm-hmm. Everybody else could probably eat a bag of dicks aside from a few of them who, <laughs> yeah. who uh, like, and I'm not going to say everybody else is like a blanket statement because there's some people who are, I'm just like indifferent to. Yeah, it's but it's like, like they know who they are. Yeah, but like the people who I used to be friends with who I'm not anymore, if it's like I'm not keeping up with you now, it's like there's a fucking reason. It's like either you were misgendering me constantly and you couldn't fucking get up at the program after four fucking years and you're still calling me he after voice surgery and shit. Mm -hmm. Or like you weren't even like you were just like one of my high school friends or something and we just stopped talking eventually after transition. Like that shit just happens. Like Yeah, it's just a natural thing. It's yeah, uh-huh. it's not even personal, you know? Mm-hmm. It's not even like they're bad people or I dislike them, you know. Um but like it's hard. And I know that if I go back, I'm gonna be around that friend who I had that friendship break up with who we're still not friends, you know? And I don't expect to suddenly ever be friends again because she said she wants to move on for good. And I I respect that, you know, I'm not gonna push. And and me moving back is a confrontation of everything that I ran away from, right? And if I choose to move away again, it won't be out of running this time. It'll be out of being like, no, I gave this a second chance and it didn't work, you know? Yeah. And and the thing is, you're moving back, right? So, like, you're saying, like, when you left, mm-hmm. you kind of were, like, leaving things behind. You're, like, you know, like, running away in a sense. But now you're coming back, but you're coming back with intention, though. Like, you know what you want out of the location. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what you want it to do for you. And you're going to interact with it in a way that you're going to attempt to extract that from it and i think you're gonna you're gonna know you're gonna reach a point where you can tell like hey i'm getting what i want or hey i'm not getting what i want and kind of yeah if i'm being honest um i'm going back the big thing that brought me back first foremost was the spirits Mm. they were they were calling me back to that land the fact that I couldn't swim in the river that I grew up with in to communicate with the water spirit there greatly hurt me this year. And the fact that, like, I was talking about uh, path working with a friend of mine and she was talking about the importance of, like, being able to get up and meditate on a mountain. And then I realized how many synchronicities had told me that I needed to do that and how there's even, like, a medicine teaching I had learned about how that's something I should probably fucking do right Mm. and immediately I was just hit by this massive massive longing to go meditate on top of the mountain outside of my hometown you know I I I I can't do that out here Mm -hmm. and and I can't do that if I'm poor here if I move back to the to Toronto later on in my life It'll be like around the time that I'm 40 or 38 or some shit and I'll have saved up enough money to have like a car in my own place out here and not have to be poor and just trying to barely make it, you know? Mm-hmm. You'll like, have a plan. It's a good it's a good city to be in if you're a professional and you got money and you have the ability to leave and fly and go out and be in nature. Like if you can drive an hour north or 2 hours north and get up to like Cottage County out in Ontario where there's like mountains and lakes and rivers and trees it's a different fucking story right Mm -hmm. but i don't know the backlands of ontario it's not my province i didn't grow up here it's not my stomping ground i don't know shit right this ain't my land you know and if i'm gonna learn it i'm gonna have to learn it later on when i have privilege like i came here to find myself and, and and have this journey but it's time to come home and put that shit together and do all the things now that i had been running from when I came out here, right? Because like I told you, when I started my journey, I like was pushing off of that shit, you know? And I wasn't trying to to accept my fate. I was kind of trying to run from it a little bit. And here I am full circle, you know? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to hog up all the mic because you still got to talk about home too, Jay. Oh, yeah. I mean, Scott, you kind of sound like you wanted to jump in with something. I, the only thing, it's interesting, uh, I loved when Sophia was talking about how, you know, being queer people, home is, is difficult to talk about sometimes. And, and we all went, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the thing that, that really made me contemplative when we did that, when we all kind of 
in unison went, mm -hmm, like that, you know, <laughs> was that I know for a fact that we all know exactly what we're talking about. But at the same time, those experiences are three distinctly different experiences mm -hmm. with similar sort of outcomes. But they all you know, evoke the same feeling and the right. same Difficulty. reaction. Right. Like for me, you know, it's this sort of sense of, you know, leaving this house, leaving kind of being whether it's just me and Darian or, you know, whether it's me, Darian and Christian, whatever, whatever the future holds. And in, in as far as like us getting our own place. We think about that a lot, and I get very melancholy about that a lot. And and I think about it because, for me, that always represents renewal in a, in a really big kind of way, in a way that I've never experienced just, you know, um, in general. You know what I mean? A mm -hmm. sort of sense of breaking away from something that I have been under, c captured in. It's hard to explain, but sort of a shadow, I guess. Mm -hmm. that I have been under for a really long time. And so I get it. You know what I mean? As much as I love the concept of home and I, you know, but like I said, when I was talking, you know, home is a lot about the people that I'm with. And a lot of the time, as I've said to Darian before, you know, home a lot of the time is wherever he is for me, mm -hmm. just because I feel mm -hmm. safe when I'm with him. I feel like I can think clearer more often, and he really helps to ground me out, you know? I was going to say, he's kind of like an anchor point. Mm hmm So, you know, leaving for me, finally being able to get my own place, leave somewhere that isn't here, live somewhere that isn't at home, right? You know, my family home. Um... Yeah, because once again, like Sophia, it rep there's a lot of things that that even this the, the, the building the house that i live in mm -hmm. um represents great memories but a lot of painful ones too you know mm -hmm. so that yeah that's what i wanted to comment on it just was it was just interesting like i'm not even trying to like change the mood or anything it just was really no. a deep contemplative sort of like you know wow we all three of us reacted you know what i mean like yeah that's all yeah, because uh, home is a mixed fucking bag, and if you are a queer person who has a good relationship with your family, then, like, you are so blessed, and I hope you can treasure that and appreciate that for the true gift it really is. Mm hmm Absolutely. To add a little bit of dark humor on top of that, I was I had this really bizarre thought. I was like, you know how like home goods stores, right? Like that sell like things for your home and they're all like cozy and soft and Yeah. I was like, what if you sold like home goods but it was for like queer people, right? You're like, Oh, would you like some trauma pillows and like <laughs> some <laughs> Uh, PTSD pots and pans. <laughs> like... There's got to be a BDSM <laughs> section for all right. the <laughs> tie downs needed. Like um, I was just thinking, I was like, can we have like traumatic home goods <laughs> for all your trauma needs? <laughs> panic room pillows, <laughs> panic room throw pillows. Oh Fuck. my god! <laughs> or when you just need to be cozy in your safe space. So, like I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> Polka dot intruder alarm on the robot. <laughs> dark, uh, dark, dark. But sometimes my brain goes there and it makes me feel better. I don't know why. It's, a, well. it's um, it, it there's a story I heard some time ago about people who are suffering, and um, I can't remember the context of who it was, but these one group of people came up to these other people who were new to suffering. And at one point they were just like, look, come on, you gotta, you gotta cheer up a little bit. And the other people are like, what? And they're like, you can't suffer like this. You have to laugh through it and, mm -hmm. and, and, it, and like get through it some way, make jokes about it, laugh in the face of your adversity. If you let it get you down, it'll kill you, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can really tie that, that into like my own kind of definitions and feelings of home and stuff like that. Like, so my parents, so I, when my parents had me, they had a house in another neighborhood in Philly and the neighborhood was kind of starting to kind of go downhill. So they sold it and they bought another house. I was about maybe like 
Oh, there's pre-kindergarten. So I was before five years. I was younger than five years old when we moved into the house that I pretty much grew up in. I have some memories of that first house, but not many. And some of them might even just be recreated memories from family videos. So I don't know. So the house that I know of, um, you know, is it was actually a really cute little block. There was actually a couple trees on the block, surprisingly. So some people had a couple trees. So there was actually some shade in the summer. And it was a really cute block. We had, we had a yard with grass. It was, we had a yard with grass and we had a pool and a deck, which was, it's kind of unheard of in the city, you know, to find um, properties that have those kind of amenities. And we had a porch too. We had a really pretty big porch that we could sit out on. I would sit out there with my mom while she was drinking her coffee and just really good memories. It was a good, there was a lot of kids on the block too around our age. So we had a lot of kids to play with and Pokemon cards and we used to play Harry Potter school and, you know, all those kind of fun kid games that you used to play. Hmm. Um, so really, like, my my growing up on the block in the home, good. I have more fond memories of the street itself than as opposed to the house itself. Because my dad, oh. my mom always kept it very immaculately clean. She was very, um, that was her thing, not a speck of dust, not a crumb, not a speck of dust. Uh, my dad, it was kind of a fixer upper house, but he had this <laughs> habit of starting a project and never finishing it, i.e. the bathroom. He ripped the whole bathroom out, like down to the studs, basically, and never fucking put it back together. <laughs> so <laughs> we had like a shower that was just like plastic and wood poles and like... <laughs> He ripped the sink out, never put the sink back in, so we had to brush our teeth in the kitchen sink, and it was a point of contention between my parents, let's just say. But anyway, after so many years, I think it's because my dad had made up his mind that he was going to retire to Florida, so he didn't want to put any more time and money into the house in Philly. So anyway, me and my sister, we've we moved out pretty early, got our own spots, but they sold the house. I think they've been down there for a year or two now. Um, so they sold the house and it's not far from where I live now. All these neighborhoods are real close together. And so the other day with Katie, I think where I was like, let's drive by my parents' old house. Like, I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see what they did to it. <laughs> and so we, uh, we drove by and it turns out they have converted it into a rental. <laughs> it is for rent. <laughs> so they fixed it up and it's now a rental like every other house in Philly. And they built this ugly ass wall separating because it's a twin. So they built this ugly ass wall in between the houses on the porch and it just blocks off all like the sun and the light. And But and I looked at the house and and I just laughed like I didn't really have any sadness. I didn't really have any. There was no there was no mourning. There was no pain. You know, like it was just like, ah, oh, that's someone else's house now okay yeah. you know and and i didn't really have a connection to it i was more my connection was more to the block and maybe the pool in the back and you know like it was that kind of stuff but it wasn't really so much the house and my sister i remember when they were selling the house you know early on in the process she was like oh it's just really like sad you know like to really think about that like there's so many memories and it seems like everything's moving so fast because they found a buyer like super quickly um mm -hmm. and she was like everything's moving so fast and it's just it's a lot like aren't you sad and i'm like i'm just it's just what they're doing that's just the next phase of life you know what i mean we're adults now and now mom and dad are retired and they're gonna go somewhere else and i don't know it just it didn't uh it didn't phase me too much but i think my my kind of definition of home is kind of my definition of home is wherever i am Wherever the space that I have declared is home base is home for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'll always feel a certain uh, dedication to the city of Philadelphia. You know, to call myself I'm from Philly. There's a certain mm -hmm. thing that we have about it. I don't know mm -hmm. why, but we do. And I'll always have that little chip on my shoulder, I think, no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, but my eventual plan 
in terms of, you know, home and space and relocation is my plan is, uh, you know, three to five year plan, move to Delaware, which isn't far from Philly. It's maybe 45 minutes. It's in another state. And reason is it's a smaller state, uh, less taxes, more affordable, you know, that whole kind of thing. But really it's, uh, it's prettier. I noticed there's a lot more. They care about their wildlife a lot. There's a lot of good parks, a lot of state parks, all kinds of wildlife reservations and stuff. And it just wow. seems like a really nice place to really do good witchcraft work in. So mm -hmm. that's my plan. And that's why I want to go there. But yeah, so for me, it's really wherever I declare, wherever I kind of, uh, I don't know, st stomp my foot down and I say, this is home base. That's that's home for me. So it's really just wherever I happen to declare. Hmm. Wherever I set up shop. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, kind of like a, a phrase I've heard with Native people. They say, Turtle Island is my home, so wherever I lay my head is uh, is where my home is, you know? And yeah. I kind of uh -huh. rock that a lot. Like, I, Toronto could be home if, if the land felt more connected to me. If uh, there was a lot more other things going on, but... It's still home while I'm here, you know? Mm. I don't feel like I'm out of place. I do have the call to leave, but yeah. I yeah, I feel like there's kind of, like, levels to home, too. Like, you know, because you're, you know, you're talking to someone in the street or someone at work, oh, yeah, I'm going to go home now. You know, and, and sometimes home isn't always, like, a fun place to be because I remember, I mean, like, when I was living with Katie, we were living in the basement of her parents' house. It was all of us, like both of us in a basement and it was just, we were on top of each other. My altar was there. All of just everything was in one fucking space and it was very difficult to to manage. And yeah, that was the one time where I'd be like, oh, I'm going home. And I'd be like, oh, I'm going home. And it's nothing against Katie. And she even says this too. She's like, it was hard to live on top of somebody. Uh -huh. <laughs> Basically, it's really, we had like a straight up Bert and Ernie bed situation. That's how close we were. Good night, Bert. Good night, Ernie. <laughs> exactly. And we know which one's Ernie and which one's Bert, so... <laughs> Who's who? I'm definitely Bert. Or fucking... Yeah, Bert. Okay. <laughs> Katie's definitely Ernie. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That was, uh, that was a, a fucking situation to handle. But ever since now that I have... So I do have, like... Uh, a house very similar to Scott's, but except it's just me and Joyce here, and so now I'm like, I have all these different rooms that I can do stuff in, and it's kind of, it's really blowing my mind, but I had to clear out so much junk in order to do it, because it's a family house that I'm living in, but it's been fun. It's It's been a really awesome experience to recreate this space in the way that I need to use it. That's good. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything else that we kind of wanted to touch on? Or, this can also be, you know, uh, a little bit of a shorter talk. Wanted, yeah. Uh, even though this is more of like a, to kind of go back to our, our funny little joke, mm. I just kept picturing working <laughs> at this, like, depressive home goods store, but <laughs> in, like, the section that solely deals with, uh, weighted blankets. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I got Joyce a weighted blanket for Christmas. <laughs> Darian was just asking me for ours yesterday. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> Joyce loves it. Constantly pinned to the couch. And I'm like, why? <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like all that weight. My my mother doesn't either. She said yeah. it feels like a body on top of me. She yeah. gets claustrophobic real easy. I need that soon. I'm going to buy one eventually. But I spend, I'm that person who like, I was going to buy one at Walmart, and then I looked up a review, and then all the beads gather into one place on it, and it's apparently a really shitty weighted blanket. So I, I dodged a bullet not buying that one, but then I went and looked up good ones online, and that'll send you down a fucking autistic trail of trying yes. to find the perfect fucking weighted blanket. God help you. Yeah, try finding the perfect weighted blanket for your wife. Dun, dun, dun. No. Um... No, I actually found a really good deal, Sophia, so I will send the link to you. All right. Yeah. Yes, please. 
because trust me i am not made out of money and joyce knows that so <laughs> i ain't dropping no two three four hundred dollars on a fucking blanket <laughs> yeah if you could someone because we are oh yeah actually yeah that one from um the one from walmart <laughs> yeah i'll pull it from our orders i'll find the link and i'll drop it in our chat Actually, I'll put it in the show notes for anyone else who needs an affordable weighted blanket, because I'm sure plenty of you out there listening could use one. <laughs> Not sponsored, by the way, by the uh, weighted blanket company. Speaking of which, I mean, <laughs> like, if you're a sponsor and maybe you want to hit us up. Actually, that's probably like... a perfect sponsor for us as <laughs> a weighted yeah. blanket manufacturer. You know what we could do? Go to our way to get, like uh ads that are specifically targeted to people with depression and witches like <laughs> hey cool bottles look at this we got a bottle delivery service to your door you don't even need to go get the bottles they come to you now and okay. what are you gonna do with those bottles i don't know it's up to you and every one in one four bottles will have a mystery item in it maybe it's a ferret skull maybe it's the tooth from a skunk we don't know we don't really manage the bottles. We just them. So enjoy Frank's mystery bottles. <laughs> Shit. We should start making like fake ads <laughs> for like products <laughs> and services that are not real. I really want to do this. I want to make fake ads and have like a 15 minute ad block where we bullshit every day until we get ad people who are like, these fuckers are good. Let's pay these fuckers to to. I say we do shit. it. I yeah. I support this 100. percent I'm this just going to go Justin idea. Royland on it, and I'm going to take a really big bong toke before it, <laughs> and uh, and we'll we'll do that. <laughs> and whatever Actually, happens, happens. Do you want to record one for this episode? I mean, you're better at it off the cuff, so I will let you have the floor. Yeah. Well, we all we all can take a minute to think about this. I'm just saying. No, it would be something I'd have to prepare. I'm not. I'm not that good on my feet like that. Okay. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, but yeah, I'm totally down for. Uh, all I can think of is when you're like ads for depressed witches, and I was like, wow, that really is our market. I guess. Hey, are you a depressed mm -hmm. witch? Check out my podcast. Do I think you'll really get something out of it? <laughs> <laughs> the worst part is like when you say when you say depressed witches, I just like the witches <laughs> what do we need we need vitamins weighted blankets um weed mm, yeah uh, dispensaries dispensaries should like weed delivery service would be oh, a good yeah. thing for us to pedal um probably those uh the food in a box <laughs> i don't, don't want to like food in a box a company I don't want to plug a company. Like right? the meal things? Yeah, like the meal order <laughs> things. It could be like Blue Menu or whatever the fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, plug so... a, a meal in the box thing so our depression witches can have their depression tacos right out of the box. It'll be good. <laughs> to do their magic to help with their depression. Yeah, see, it all makes sense. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Or we can awesome. sort of the market on making a depressed witch box, and it's kind of like a swag, <laughs> except we send shit to witches who are depressed every month, except sometimes we get depressed, so even the box is depressing. <laughs> it's just an empty box. <laughs> it's an empty box with a note that says, sorry, <laughs> sad face. It's a horribly written note that's like, we tried, we tried. <laughs> Or there's like a no, no. At the very minimum, there would be a picture of you holding your bunny with Darian behind you, <laughs> saying "Happy Holidays." Okay. <laughs> we didn't know what else to send, so here's some cute animal pictures. <laughs> on a, <laughs> but on our good days, it'd be like a, one of those really nice T-shirts, but the, the witch would be like weighted blanket, <laughs> calling over the mug of tea, <laughs> just summoning it from across the room. Weighted, yeah, weighted yeah. cloaks. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you why you buy a three-footed cauldron instead of a four, and it has nothing to do with the triple goddess, you little shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh god damn! You know what? I'm keeping this whole bit in in the episode. Y'all are gonna hear, hear this because I ain't cutting that shit out. That's gold. Ah, uh, but I think I think we all sound a little tired, <laughs> so. Um, is there anything like kind of concluding, uh, 
kind of thoughts or statements that we wanted to um, wrap this up with? Home is where the uh, heart is. Yeah. Home, home is where the heart is. Hallmark, sponsor us now. Um, <laughs> um, give land back to native people. Capitalism's still evil. Uh, Black Lives Matter. Uh, don't forget to protest this summer. Uh, the election wasn't stolen, and rabbits are fucking cool. I agree awesome. with all of those statements. Oh, also, <laughs> wait, um, also, give control of climate-related things back to Native people as well, because mm -hmm. Native peoples did it best, and they should land be back. in charge of it. That's what, that's what land back means, my friend. Oh, okay, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah, that. <laughs> no, you're good. Okay. It, 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 it's that's the thing too, though. When you boil something down to a catchphrase like "land back," people mm -hmm. may not necessarily know what it means, and sometimes you need to have a dialogue about that. And that's why conversations like that are important, and why mm -hmm. confusion can arise, and why someone will want to clarify more. So, I, I there's nothing wrong with wanting to clarify on that, you know? Yes, absolutely. I didn't know that, but thank you. I didn't yeah. know that that was like encompassed in that too. Yeah, I'll send you all some links to toss in the show notes. Yeah, do it. Absolutely. I will be more than happy to add them in. Fucking A. Mm -hmm. So I think with that, we're going to sign out and we're going to see you guys in the next one. Bye, Get some everyone. sleep, bitches. Or don't. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, I mean, you do you. Stay up all night on a coke binge. Listen to the rest of the podcast if you want. Have fun. Bye.